Day two of the XFL draft just concluded, and let me tell you something. The Houston Roughnecks got some dogs, and I'm going to go over them right now. What's good, Roughnecks fans, and welcome back to the Roughnecks Analyst Podcast. I'm your host, Cullen Watkins, and in today's episode, I will be going over the new 2023 Houston Roughnecks roster. Of course, the XFL draft just concluded, so we don't just have quarterbacks now. We have the full team in place, and as a fan, it can be overwhelming to have to learn these new players with different backgrounds, what are their play styles, but hey, 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 I'm here for y'all. I got you. I spent the past like two to three days researching the entire team. Every single person we drafted, I spent researching deep into their career so you didn't have to. So you're going to stay. You want to stay for this. I'm going to go position by position, give you the highlights, the people to look out for. I got you covered. So let's get started first with, first of all, the quarterback. Not before someone I knew coming in unannounced to my recording area and messing me up. But that's not important. All right, I'll tell you what is important. The Houston Roughnecks got their third quarterback. So based on my last video, we already know we have Brandon Silvers and Caleb Ellaby. We already know that. But the, at the end of day two of the XFL draft, we picked up Cole McDonald from the University of Hawaii. I love the pickup. He's a great athlete, great arm. He's accurate. He has a lot of power. He has a lot, a lot of juice around that arm. But he's played for the Titans, all this stuff about him. And he's put up great college stats, all this stuff about him. He's on our team now. So this makes the starting situation a lot, a lot more different, actually. But we're not going to cover that in this video. That's for another video, another time as we get closer to the season starting. Specifically, probably training camp. We're going to find that out. But until then, we're not worried about who's starting or not. We're not really worried about quarterbacks right now. We're worried about the rest of the team. And what a better way to segue into our first position that we're going to be talking about, the running back position. Now... We drafted three running backs in the first like offensive rounds, not including the open open rounds, the open draft rounds. We're not including those in today's video um, because that'd be way too much. These are the guys that we drafted very first, technically. So we drafted three guys, and I love all three of them. We got Adrian Killens, Max Borgie, and Bryson Alleyne, but... In specific, we're going to be talking about Adrian Killens because he was our very first pick of the entire draft. We picked him with the eighth pick. He is out of UCF, 5'8", 177 pounds. So Killens played all four years at UCF. He made second team all AAC for two years in a row. Um, and out of college, he signed with the Eagles and the Broncos but was recently released. But when we talk about this guy you got to talk about his speed. In my opinion, he easily might be the fastest guy in the entire draft. Coach Wade Phillips even said it himself. You know, looking at his highlights, you can see he runs well, and he can catch, and he runs after the catch very well, and that works perfectly with the coach A.J. Smith air raid offense. It works perfectly. I'm so glad we spent our first pick on Adrian Killens because he's too fast to pass up. He's way too fast to pass up. In his final year of college, he put up 629 rushing yards, seven rushing touchdowns, and 120 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. We can use him in all aspects of the game. We could even use him for special teams if we'd like, even though I, you heard me say Bryson Alleyne. He may be used for our return situation, not Adrian Killens, but folks, keep an eye out for Adrian Killens. He might be leading the league Easily in rushing yards because I, I, he is that good. I can't believe we got him at the eighth overall pick. He should have been picked earlier. To, and he can catch too. We can use him in the receiving game. Adrian Killens might be a star on this team. Keep an eye out for him. Moving to our tight end position. It's really not too hard for me to pick the star guy to focus on because we only drafted one tight end in the offensive selection part of the draft, and that's Garrett Owens, the 6'3", 230-pounder. 
and look, that may not be too impressive for a tight end. Like, okay, tight ends, they're supposed to be big. They're supposed to be tall. They're supposed to be, you know, heavy, muscular. They're supposed to be like that. He doesn't just play tight end. In fact, in college, he played running back majority of the time, not tight end. And now, now he's listed as a tight end, not a running back in the XFL. Talk about being versatile. What can Coach Phillips come up with with him? What can Coach A.J. Smith come up with him? He's, he's huge. We can use him in the running game. We can use him in the passing game. He can fit perfectly along with Adrian Killens. Perfectly. And in fact, actually, Garrett Owens was the pick right after Killens. Or, uh, my bad, Garrett Owens was right after Killens um, with the ninth pick. So those two might be used in tandem really early on because both of them seem really talented. Uh, Garrett Owens' final year of college, he put up 630 rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns, 239 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. He can do it all. Keep an eye out for this guy. He's going to tear it up. I, I, he's really going to be our only starting tight end if we even use a tight end, you know. So Garrett Owens, keep an eye out for him. And now for our wide receiver core, look, I'm really sad that I can't go really in-depth about every single wide receiver this video, because first of all, that would take absolutely forever, and this is just an everything you need to know video. So sadly, I have to pick only a few to really talk about, but just know every single guy that we got has the potential to make it big. Simple as that. But... Like I said earlier, I have to pick a few that really pop out to me. And first and foremost, that's the 24th pick of the XFL draft. Cedric Bird out of the University of Hawaii. Oh, hey, we heard about that. Cole McDonald, Hawaii. Anyway, Cedric Bird, Hawaii. 5'9", 175 pounds. Spent two years at the University of Hawaii. He led the Mountain West in receptions in 2019. And he was second on his team in touchdowns. And he's played a bit in fan-controlled football and stuff, but he just hasn't had that opportunity yet. This is his opportunity. In his final year of college, he put up 1,097 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns on 98 receptions. That's really good. And if you look at his highlights, that, like you're probably seeing right now on the screen, he looks really impressive. He's able to get the catch, deep passes, short passes, pretty any. Any level pass he's able to catch. He's really good. He's fast. And that's great in the air raid offense. So Cedric Bird, keep an eye out for him. As well as Deontay Burnett out of USC. Now that people call him Big Play Tay. He's six foot, 186 pounds. And he's a little bit older on the team. He graduated in 2017. But that also means that there's a lot of experience available as he played for the Jets the Eagles, and the 49ers. Most recently, he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. But in his last year of college, he put up 1,114 receiving yards. That's really good. And two, he played for USC, so you already know he has that natural talent. You don't, you don't just play for USC and be a, a nobody at football, all right? USC is an elite football school. So Deontay Burnett... Clearly, he has the talent, and I think the XFL is going to be perfect for him to show it off. Really looking forward to it. He's made some, he's really athletic. Like, he dives out for, for balls and everything. It, I, it, he's going to be so fun to watch with whoever's quarterback. And then finally, we have another bird, BJ Bird. So we have Cedric Bird and BJ Bird, the two birds. And let me tell y'all, BJ Bird, we got him late. We got him. Like someone, one of the final rounds of the wide receivers, and he went to Moorhead University, uh, Moorhead State. My bad. He's six foot, 190 pounds. All right, all right. But the stats he put up in his final year of play are phenomenal. First of all, he holds multiple single season records for Moorhead State, which is impressive enough. But listen to this. Listen to this. In 90 receptions, he put up 1,313 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns while, again, holding these single-season records for 
yards, catches, and touchdowns. Everything you want as a wide receiver. And two, he was a FCS Walter Payton Award finalist. B.J. Bird, what a steal. What a steal. So look out for him. So we got three names, to, in my opinion, three names to really look out for on the wide receiver side of the ball. And that's Cedric Bird, Deontay Burnett, and then B.J. Bird. But again, I'll be talking about more of the wide receiver group naturally as this channel goes on and on. Uh, so you y'all will hear about these guys eventually. But this whole wide receiving core is great. I really like who we picked up because the wide receivers were so important in this draft. And I think Coach Phillips, he hit well on it. So B.J. Bird, Deontay Burnett, and Cedric Bird, keep an eye out for them. And now flipping the switch from the offense to the defense, we have our defensive ends and our defensive tackles. Look, on the defense, we got some studs. <laughs> All right, we got some studs on defense, and it starts off with John Daka out of James Madison, 6'2", 240 pounds. Listen to this, all right? He led Division II football in sacks and tackles for losses in the 2019 season. He led all of Division II football in those two stats. All right. Ring the bell, ring the bell. That's already impressive. John Daka, he won the Charles Haley Defensive MVP Award. He's been with the Ravens, Jets, Rams, and Bears, so NFL experience. Uh, his last year of college, he did put up 67 tackles, 28 tackles for loss, 16 and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, and one block. Look, John Daka is going to be a cornerstone of this defense. At the Roughnecks Town Hall that I went to a few weeks back, they talked about with the defense wanting to get into the backfield, wanting to stop the run, wanting to stop the quarterback, you know, keep them behind or at the line of scrimmage. And John Daka is going to fit that perfectly. He can do exactly that. Really excited for him. Really, really excited for him. Then we got Jaquan Artis, 6'2", 245 pounds, and we got him late, too. He's almost like a B.J. Bird for the defense. We got him late. I believe here it says the 11th round. We got him late. All right. All right. Whatever. He may not play. No, 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 no. I'm really curious about this guy. I'm really curious about how he's going to do. He played in the indoor football league recently in the most recent season. For the Wranglers. I believe it's either the Arizona Wranglers or the Northern Arizona Wranglers. I forget. He played for them as a technically a rookie. He won the 2022 IFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. Putting up in 13 games, 9.5 sacks, 17.5 tackles for loss, and 40 tackles in general. We got a technically Defensive Rookie of the Year on our team Given that it's for the IFL, we don't know how indoor football is going to transfer over to outside more professional football. But still, either way, he clearly made an impact right away. So, hey, I don't know. Jaquan Artis, keep an eye out for him. I'm curious how he's going to do given the IFL to outdoor football switch. I'm cheering for him, though. I love stories like this. Uh, get into that big stage, you know. That's what the XFL is all about get into that big stage. So keep an eye out for him as well. And now going to our linebackers. So clearly, DeAndre Johnson is a name to watch for one of our linebackers. He was our fourth pick, technically, of the linebacker draft. No, he was the XFL's fourth pick, our first pick of the linebacker. So he's our first linebacker off the board. So yeah, DeAndre Johnson out of the University of Miami, the Florida one, not the Ohio one. He is 6'3", 252 pounds, so he's a big guy. He's a monster. Uh, he, spent a, he spent most of his college seasons at Tennessee, but last year he transferred to uh, the University of Miami. And he had some crazy stories. I believe he was, like, he survived a stabbing that he almost passed away in high school because he got stabbed, but he made a full recovery and look at him. He's playing in the XFL. He played at Miami. Crazy comeback story. This is a guy I want to get on an interview, and I want to interview him. Um, 
you know, he led the Hurricane defense, the Miami Hurricanes, and tackles for loss and sacks, and he had a brief stint with the Dolphins. And, you know, his stats won't pop out at you necessarily. 26 tackles, 8.5 tackles for loss, 4.5 sacks. Well, okay, it's still impressive, don't get me wrong. But I think it's his physical traits and his technique that caught the eye of Brian Stewart and the coaches. You know, sure, he may not have the most eye-breaking stats that college football can offer, but the way he does things, you know, his speed, his explosiveness, clearly it's like, and even watching his highlights, it's like, he'd do good in the XFL. He'd do good for us. I don't care what the stats say. And two, you know, that, that mentality that he has, you know, he's, he's used to making comebacks. He's used to, you know, not giving up. And that's huge for the team. So we got DeAndre Johnson on defense. We also got Devontae Beckett out of Marshall University, 5'11", 214 pounds. And he's a MVP. Let me tell you why. In 2020, he was the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. That's Conference USA. Defensive Player of the Year of the Conference USA. That's really good. So he's, I'm guessing he's going to be one of our, our starting linebackers, clearly. Um, he put up 90 tackles, two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles in his final year. Um, you know, 90 tackles, that's almost 100 tackles in a season. But yeah, Devontae Beckett out of Marshall. He looks really good. Um, he also got Conference USA first team all conference. He's really good. Keep an eye out for him. And then finally, moving to our safeties and cornerbacks. This is, this is where I'd say not necessarily our weakest spot is. But at least when I was looking, this is where I'm like, ah, uh, okay. We got some guys, but... Not, I, I don't feel like it's as strong as our linebackers or our defensive ends, defensive tackles. But there's still some dogs on it. So we got Ajin Harris out of USC. Now, oh, that, name's, that name sounds familiar. He played for the Roughnecks in 2020 where he put up, in five games, he played all five games. He put up 23 tackles. He was part of that killer 2020 Houston Roughnecks defense. So he's coming back, and two, he looked really impressive in college, just ignoring the XFL work. Um, he got two pick sixes in his entire college career, so he's clearly fast. I'm glad to have him back. I'm expecting a bigger role for him this year than – because that 2020 defense is loaded. I think this year we're going to see Ashley Harris really step it up. Keep an eye out for him. And then we got – I'm really excited for him, our safeties. One of our safeties, Devin Hafford – out of Tarleton State, pretty somewhat close to me, I guess, just because it's in Texas, doesn't mean anything. 6'1", 209 pounds, so he spent a lot of time with Tarleton State, multiple, multiple seasons. Uh, he was the WAC Defensive Player of the Year, so we got another college Defensive Player of the Year on the team. Uh, he actually played for the Maulers of the USFL and the Patriots of the NFL, clearly. I, who, what other Patriots would there be? But listen to this, listen to this. In his most recent, his final year of Tarleton State football, he put up 50 tackles and six interceptions. Six interceptions! That's crazy! And he's big, too. Um, I can't wait to see what he can do. Like, geez, he's going to be loading up interceptions left and right, folks. So, Devin Hafford, keep an eye out for him. He's going to do good, too. And don't, we'll, do, we'll do one more while we're already at it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Um... Rally Tejada. I just want to cover him. He was our first pick in the cornerbacks and safeties round. Out of Baylor, 5'10", 188 pounds. Automatically, I was excited. All right, my sister goes to Baylor. I've been around Baylor a lot. And he was our first pick. So it's like, okay, let's see this guy. And I found that his stats aren't eye-popping. It's almost like DeAndre Johnson. His stats aren't crazy. So I'm like, what? why did we draft him? Then you look into the stuff that the stats don't show. He's physical. Absolutely physical. 
And some of his coaches had described him as a guy who, quote, scrappy guy who will punch you in your face. That sounds like a guy I want leading my, my defense. I don't know about you, but I want him leading my defense, and we have him. Uh, apparently, he's a great tackler as well. He doesn't miss a lot of tackles, and that's going to be huge, especially for cornerbacks. I'd love to see his interception numbers. I, I don't think he scored an interception in his final year of college. Uh, a, a lot of NFL scouts say that he's, his arms are a little too short for NFL level of play, but I'd love to see what Tejada can do. You know, can he make some adjustments and pick up some, inter, uh, some interceptions? I think he can. He seems like a great physical player, a great leader, very charismatic. He's willing to run through a brick wall for you, and that's what we need. That's what our defense needs. But that really concludes this general overview of this Roughnecks roster. Now, again, we drafted a lot of people between the open rounds and the beginning rounds. We drafted a lot of people, and as you can see here on my little note notepad, I uh, I have stuff written about all of them, all of them, and it was hard for me to choose just a few to talk about because I know there's so many out there. But don't worry, y'all will eventually hear about them over time. It's just that I needed to get this out and get y'all some players to watch. Again, too bad I couldn't talk about all of them, but. That will come in time. Do not worry. If they do good in the game, I will talk about them. All right? And our O-line, our kickers as well, uh, I didn't cover them really because um, it's, I don't know, I really wanted to cover the offense, the playmakers for both sides. Um, all y'all need to know is that our O-line and our kickers, they look really good as well. So y'all don't need to worry, but comment down below. Who are you excited to watch? You know, someone I either mentioned or someone I didn't mention. Who are you excited to watch? And two, who should I try to get to interview? I real, I'm probably going to, after this video releases, contact some players to potentially interview for y'all because I'm a podcast. I need to interview some people. And I feel like I'm far enough along in this where I feel pretty comfortable interviewing some guys for y'all. So who should I interview? Who are you excited to look for? But if you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. And if you... Did make it all the way to the end. Clearly, you are a super fan. So make sure, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and like this video. Because, hey, all we really need is the uniforms and the schedules. Besides that, we're ready for the season. We got our quarterbacks. We got our rosters. We got our team names. We got our cities. We got our coaches. We really only need uniforms and schedules and the season's ready to go. So you need to stay updated. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content, any XFL, any Roughnecks content specifically. And, of course, like this video because it helps me out a lot. Thank you all so much for watching. And go Roughnecks, baby. Let's go.